scoliosis treatment by severity. One of the most common questions that get asked is how bad can scoliosis get? Now we know scoliosis is a progressive condition. Scoliosis has in its very nature to worsen over time. Where scoliosis is time at diagnosis is nowhere indicative of where it would say and how much it can progress during very critical times, typically during adolescent growth phases or typically during later stage life. And really only proactive treatment can work towards counteracting the condition's progressive nature. So when we look at scoliosis severity, we understand that diagnosing the scoliosis allows us to further classify scoliosis on, on condition-based variables such as severity. And severity is something that we, we determine by measuring something called the Cobb angle. And a Cobb angle is typically an angle that's taken during a scoliosis x-ray. And lines are drawn from the most tilted vertebra on the top to the most tilted vertebra on the bottom. And we measure these intersecting lines in something called degrees. The higher the degree, the higher the Cobb angle or the more severe the scoliosis is. And when we look at scoliosis, we know it's diagnosed either to mild, moderate, or severe. Now, when we understand how severe a curve can become, we only can tell you that it's unique to that patient. Some curves can progress only to mild stages, while other curves can progress to severe, and other curves can progress to very, very severe numbers, like I like to use as a fourth category where there are 80 plus degrees. And there's no way to predict how much a curve will progress. All we can see is as curves progress, we can see the Cobb angle and the X-ray become more severe. Now, a mild scoliosis is, a, is when we take a Cobb angle measurement and the, scol the scoliosis curvature is between 10 and 25 degrees. Now, if you have more than one scoliosis, typically the classification is made with the largest curve. So let's say you have a four degree thoracic curve and a lumbar curve that's only 20, 20 degrees. You wouldn't say you have a mild scoliosis, you would call that a, a more severe scoliosis because they'll classify it based upon the larger of the two curvatures. Mild scoliosis though, curves less than 25 degrees is typically the first stop of the curve progression. Now, the majority of cases that are diagnosed are unfortunately diagnosed greater than mild. The average size of diagnosis is a moderate scoliosis or greater. So most patients who are diagnosed with scoliosis are never found at this size because typically the symptoms of this scoliosis can be very, very subtle in an adolescent. And adult patients may have pain as a result of their scoliosis of this type of curve, but many times they may not, so they may not feel it. Um, but however, in adolescent cases while they're growing, the only thing they're gonna find is postural deviation. But in mild scoliosis, this is the best time to treat scoliosis because when curves are mild, they're more flexible, the curves are less severe, there's less rotation, there's less posture distortion. So we know conservative treatment is, can have a very positive effect on this size curve, and we can get very significant results at this size curves. Normally, we can reduce curves based upon a percentage of the size of curve. So smaller curves can reduce a greater percentage than more severe curves. In addition, if we take a 20 degree curve and reduce it to, to, to 10, we've you know taken down this curve down to 10 degrees. However, if a 20 degree curve progresses to 40, and then we treat it and we reduce the same 10 degrees, now we're at 30. That's a 20 degree difference in the exact same person. So early treatment typically means much better results because curves are flexible, they respond better. So if we're ever gonna treat a scoliosis, this is the best time. However, traditional treatment takes this size curve and does nothing. They, with mild curvatures, they recommend no treatment and they just, just let curves continue to progress over time. And as these curves progress, they can move into the moderate stage. Now in a moderate scoliosis, the angle is measured between 25 and 40 degrees. And between 25 and 40 degrees, you have this 15 degree window where they call it moderate scoliosis. Now, most this is the most common size of diagnosis for, for scoliosis. And this is where we tend to see more significant posture changes in children. We tend to see uneven shoulders, uneven hips, development of rib, rib arps. In scoliosis in adult patients, we tend to see more pain or more symptoms as associated with a moderate scoliosis because the curve has become compressive in the adult form. Now, conservative treatment options here are again, are designed to reduce the size of curve. Our goal is to reduce the curve and we use it using a combination of different therapies, chiropractic care, physical therapy, corrective bracing, rehabilitation, home therapy, scoliospecific exercises, neuromedication,
thalamus reeducation, traction, vibration, to try to reduce the size of scoliosis. In traditional approaches in moderate scoliosis, most patients are left untreated, meaning they don't do anything. The curve isn't big enough to consider any type of surgery. And the only exception to this, it will be an adolescent case while they're actually growing. If they're growing, they're gonna to try to use a Boston brace or a Providence brace to try to slow down progression during this stage. And that's the only patient that's treated. Now, outside of that, meaning if you're an adult or if you're pre-puberty, pre they probably just watch and see what happens. If the curve unfortunately progresses to severe scoliosis, where the Cobb angle now is measured 40 degrees or greater, now they're calling this scoliosis severe, which I find interesting. It's 15 degrees difference. At 25 degrees, they do nothing. At 40 degrees, they saw it severe and they would recommend putting rods in your spine. Now, 15 degrees in an adolescent while it's growing could be very quick. It could be less than three months, meaning you can walk out of your doctor's office or a pediatrician with a mild diagnosis that come back next year and let's evaluate it, go through a growth spurt, grow two or three inches in the next three to six months, progress all the way to severe, and by the time you get back to your doctor's office a year later, that curve could be considered, and now you go from no treatment recommendation as mild to severe scoliosis and a recommendation of surgery. At the severe level, posture changes tend to be relatively significant for most adolescents, but it's not always that way, meaning if the patient has a relatively significant scoliosis, but they're very balanced, they may not look posturally as bad as somebody who has a smaller curve that has an unbalanced curve. And for adult patients, more severe curves can be more more significant pain, more significant dysfunction as a result of their scoliosis. Untreated severe scoliosis can lead to more significant complications like digestive issues and other types of uh, functional issues like lung impairment. But we don't know exactly when that would happen, meaning some patients it could happen earlier at 50 or 60 degrees. Other patients it may never happen until they hit 100, 120 degrees. We don't know exactly. It's unique to that person. The only way to know if there's any type of other type of functional issue, issue going on is to have those systems tested. But in the traditional scoliosis treatment, once the scoliosis becomes severe, there's really only one option to try to treat the scoliosis, and that is surgery. And that's when they do, that's when they do spinal fusion, where they fuse the spine together to reduce the size of scoliosis and sacrifice function of the spine by making by making the spine straighter, but by reducing function. And normally this is recommended if the patient is still growing. In the adult form, they may not recommend uh, scoliosis fusion so, so quickly because the long-term results or the prognosis for patients to recover from scoliosis surgery in the adult form has very mixed results. So they may not, they may see what tends to happen. However, in the adult form, if you have severe disability, severe problems, and a severe scoliosis, they would recommend scoliosis surgery as a last resort because at that point they think, well, you really have nothing to lose at this point because you so, have so many issues that they're willing to risk the scoliosis surgery because you have so many disabilities. In the conservative treatment world, our goal is the same, is to reduce the size of curve on a structural level. And we do that using all the therapies that we mentioned. We use uh, we use very specific rehabilitation, specific chiropractic centered approach. We use corrective bracing. We use home therapy, home exercises, traction, vibration, numerous education, all these therapies, and we combine them in a way to get a reduction in scoliosis. Now, in severe curves, we're normally monitoring scoliosis for a significant period of time. I mean, the goal is to reduce it and stabilize it for a significant time to have long lasting results. There's no such thing in any case of scoliosis reduction, whether it be surgical or non surgical, that you're looking at permanent reduction, meaning you do it once, you never have to worry about your scoliosis again. Scoliosis will always require a lifelong management. You're either managing it with rods and screws and bone grafts and surgeries, or you're managing it with therapy, rehab, exercises, and bracing, but you're managing it one way or the other. But the best thing to do is if you can avoid surgery where spinal fusion, because there's a couple things that you can change in life, a lot of things that you can make, you can change your mind, but spinal fusion and scoliosis surgery is not one of them. Once that that's done, it's altering your spine forever, and you're never going to have a chance to go undo the damage that's done. However, with conservative treatment options, if you're led to do this, you can always escalate to more invasive treatments as if or if your curve progresses, progresses or if you want to try a more invasive type of treatment. There's never guaranteed uh, results with any type of treatment, but one thing we do know, the earlier in this progressive cycle we find and treat scoliosis, the greater 
chance of there being treatment success. The average curve we tend to treat tends to be 60 degrees in that severe stage, and we have very successful in reducing curves, but I'd much rather have an office of 20, 25 degree curvatures that we're reducing because we can make a much larger impact on those size curves than the more severe ones. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.